official compositing for Pro! I'm just gonna go into uh, stylized. Let's go to uh, Prism. That sounds cool. I like this one. If you guys use this, it's pretty tight. Pretty tight. Um, I'm gonna turn it all the way up! Whoa, so now we created this like crazy prism effect only on the highlights and not on the entire image. So we can uh, isolate this out and you can see um, this is what it looks like, right? So that's an interesting way that you can use the Luma channel to break up something so you can affect just that thing. You can add like a light glow to it, you can add light rays to it. You can do anything you want once it's separated. So that's why compositing is all about trying to get an alpha channel in your image. Boom! <sighs> okay, track mats. This is my favorite thing to do in the entire world. <laughs> That's gotta get annoying. I know. I don't know, do you guys like it still? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter then. <laughs> Just gonna push on through it. Just gonna do it more now. Okay, this is kind of a tricky uh, concept, but bear with me. So, um, a track mat is kind of like a cookie cutter. So what it does is it takes a secondary, uh, either an image or a video, and uses the luminescence value or the alpha channel to knock out the first. So uh, here we have a nice image of an owl. And here we got uh, <laughs> a musical score by Aphex Twin, one of my faves. And we're using that Aphex Twin image to knock out transparency in the owl. You have any, you have any Aphex Twin jokes? No. Okay, great. Um, but here again, original image, we're using the luminescence value. So I think what is, uh, what's white is transparent in this instance, and what's, uh, what's black stays. And uh, that's how we kind of, you can see his eyeballs kind of punch through there. Um, if this is great, like if you want to say, um, well I'll show you what it's great for, huh? Yeah. yeah. So in After Effects, um, the top layer is what's, uh, what is used to create the transparency. So the bottom layer is the O'Reilly Owl, and the uh, top layer is the AFX Twin. So just know in After Effects when you stack things, or even in Final Cut, when you stack things, the one on the top tells it what is transparent. So I'm not, you know, I'm, I don't trust my PowerPoint videos anymore because with Compi around, so I'm just going to do this for real. <laughs> what did Billy Mitchell say? You know, it's one thing if you can do it live, you know? Like, I think it was Bill O'Reilly. No, okay, maybe, maybe both of them said it, but they're both my heroes. Oh, you're gonna like this one, you're gonna like this one. This one's my favorite effects to do in the entire world. Let's create some text here. I'm gonna call it, uh, scary. Make it kind of big or something. I'm gonna drag this below here. I'm gonna toggle the switches so that we can see track mat, this option here. I'm gonna choose Luma Mat. Let's just see what we get. Whoa, it's kind of scary, huh? Whoa! So does everyone kind of get what's happening here? We're using this fog layer to kind of uh, create opacity for this uh, for this text. So uh, I can uh, take this. I'm gonna actually show you this layer. What we're gonna do is we're gonna actually push it using curves. Curves are kind of important for color grading. So. Um, Curves, all right. So curves are very important. Um, this is basically uh, black and white. So I can create more contrast by doing something like this. This might be a, a more pronounced look for our, uh, our mat. So I'm just gonna hide this one again. Maybe drag this down. You can see how I'm uh, actually making it more transparent. And just to prove it's transparency and not just like uh, something else, let's grab uh, another image, shall we? What else we got? Uh, oh, this is gonna be a fun one too. Um, yeah. This is from uh, Matt's film, Mouthful of Dynamite! <laughs> See, here's the thing, if you make me work on your film, I get to keep all your footage and use it however I want. And you can do nothing about it. All right, so I'm cr actually creating the transparency um, using this track mat. That's pretty cool, huh? Now, I use this actually in the Mouthful of Dynamite uh, shot. I'll show you how I used it because I thought it was pretty ballin', uh, and I think you will too. So we're gonna take this wisp cloud. <laughs> it's ballin' out of control. It's ballin' out of control. Here we got some smoke layer, right? So this is when he drops that thing into the thing, and the thing happens. Everyone remember that? Yeah, I did. I did too. It's my favorite part. 
Um, we take this and let's see resources skull. Now you couldn't really see this because I made it really, really subtle. But I took a skull layer and I made the it, this layer down here have a luma mat so that. Let's see if this even works. Oh yeah! Oh my God! Scary! Whoa. Everyone see the skull there? Oh, whoo! Scary stuff. So you can like create a skull out of smoke using this kind of effect, huh? I don't know. It could be useful, right? You're working on like Ghost Rider 2 or whatever. Yeah. And you're like, I need a skull that's like formed out of smoke. I say that all the time. <laughs> all the time. I say that all the time. <laughs> the, uh, the actual wisp cloud, which I'm going to isolate. And let's just turn off the track mat so you can see what it looks like. This one is using, again, the skull, which uh, the luminescence values of the skull to tell it what's opaque and what's not. Okay, and I can also do the reverse too. If I wanted the skull to be indented in it, I could just invert the mat, right? Does everyone kind of understand that? Pretty cool, huh? And here's the best part. You can do it in Final Cut Pro. I should, uh, I think I'm gonna close down Final Cut Pro after this because uh, the computer's not running that well. Because it's the fastest computer ever, right? But when you're comping, you know, it doesn't matter how fast your computer is, it's still not good enough. Okay, so let's just take an image here. Um, let's use the fog. I don't know, why not? Um, take this fog in here. And I think I right click on this one. Composite mode, <coughs> travel map Luma. Uh, uh, that did nothing. Uh, never mind. Well, uh, will you, uh, <clears throat> I do this all the time in Final Cut's my favorite program. Uh, maybe you do it. Okay, the fog layer. Okay, so this works a little bit different than in After Effects. I think what's going on is the fog layer is only showing up based on the luminescence value of the video below it. Okay, so I mean, you can do it, right? Doesn't mean it's good. Okay, I'm just gonna quit this program. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Does everyone understand track mats? Because that's how I did a lot of this stuff in Scott Pilgrim. In fact, you know what? Let's just do let's just do it. Let's just do some more stuff. Because you guys are having a good time, right? Yeah. Woo! So here's the KO. This is what it looked like before I got to it. This is uh, made by Tyler and Nicole. And um, whoop. Hard to do this with one hand. All right, so uh, I'm gonna choose a composition. So when there's different layers in Photoshop, it'll ask you if you just wanna import one of the layers, or like merged layers, but I wanna do the whole composition. I want, I want everything. Um, so I'm just gonna go, okay. Double click on it. This is my composition. So in the composition, we have uh, the K, the O, and for some reason, he included the background. I don't need that. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a new, where's my beats? I'm, I'm just saying, I, I could use some beats. Yeah, that's my fault. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> you're, you're like, I, I want to go back to the presentation. No, you're like, oh, this is interesting. I'm just going to watch this. You're here to work. You're here to work. Hustle them, hustle them. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're here to have fun. <laughs> okay, so checkerboard. Uh, I'm going to choose the width. I'm going to, like, whoa, 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 width. Width, buddy, width. Uh, 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 width. Oh, maybe width and height, yes. Uh, I'm going to turn down the height and turn up the width. I'm going to go in here and press S for scale. I'm going to click this and that means it's going to unlock the property. So it's not going to move both uniformly. Like if I just moved it now, it would scale both. Uh, y and X are basically uh, horizontal, vertical at the same time. If I click on this, then I can stretch it. All right, so we're uh, just going to scale this up here. I'm going to say track mat, luma track mat, and that's how I created that kind of um, video gamey look to it, because all video games look like this, I guess. Um, I'm gonna bevel the alphas. So um, this has alpha information now. And everyone know what a bevel is? It kind of like, you probably use it in like Photoshop. It's the thing that makes things look kind of 3D, but kind of not really at all. Um, I'll show you what it does. Like that button edge thing? Exactly, button edges. So, uh, uh. I think I'm gonna have to actually zoom into full resolution. So you can see here without and with. So this kind of creates like a little bit of a, an edge to it. And maybe kick up the light intensity. I don't know, it looks okay, I guess. It's 
this is going horribly. <laughs> okay, well, it looks better than it did. And that's all we can really say about it. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab both these layers, copy, paste, and make sure that, um, again, like you have to have the layer that you're putting the track mat on uh, goes above it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose a directional blur. Directional blur, that's going to go onto this layer. So this layer that I made the duplicate of the, uh, the K with the lines through it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blur the edges. But I'm gonna choose the direction to be uh, horizontal. Well, that's pretty crazy. Um, I'm gonna change the blending mode to add. Or maybe, uh, let's do screen. And just change the opacity down. So the reason why this isn't affecting it properly is I've soloed that layer. So that's what it really looks like, right? So what we have is the uh, blurry layer, which has like those streaks, but it's also got a, a blur on it that does, uh, we can actually choose where we want the blur. Maybe that looks cool. And then what we have below it is the normal footage. So by combining the two, you can create some kind of cool effects like this. Whoa, I should have done that in the video. So that's, that's using basically uh, Luma mats. Track mats um, or alpha mats work the same way, but they look at alpha information. So if your image above doesn't have any alpha information, not worth uh, really doing, but it works the same way. What's opaque is opaque. What's transparent is transparent, unless you invert it using these invert options. All right, let's get back to the presentation here. So chroma keying is a, uh, is a way that you can automate masks. Again, we're looking for ways that we don't have to actually roto around someone's body in order to cut them out of an image, right? So we can use a color to isolate, just like we used a luminescence value, uh, we can use a color to separate something from the background. So here we've got a baby that was looking at a, a green screen or something. <laughs> Baby. Baby! We're gonna use, this is what the mat looks like. And we'll, we'll look at the chroma keying and actual mats. What chroma keys do behind the scenes, they don't necessarily show you it, but they're doing this. They're making uh, white and black values here. And then we can put a snowman outside! What? Now the reason we use blue and green, of course, is because human skin tones shouldn't, I'm saying shouldn't have blue and green in them. Sometimes they do. Um, but you can use any color you want. So that's why like, you can do Sin City where um, there's like a red apple or, or whatever, or red lipstick, and you just color grade, uh, you just kind of use a chroma key to separate that out, and then you make everything else below it black and white. <clears throat> what you're doing when you uh, are lighting a green screen is you want to make it the middle value. Like say if, uh, if black is zero, white is 100%, you want your color values to be somewhere around 50. You don't want it to be overexposed. You can see what happens to the sphere. Um, when you light something really intensely, or there's like a sheen on it, say it's shiny, it's going to basically blow out, and you're not going to have as strong of a color as you would in the middle of the value range. So the most saturation is going to be in the middle. So when you're lighting your blue screen, green screen, uh, you want to light it in the middle of your value, and then light your actor according to whatever value that is. All right, so, Chroma King! This is going to be pretty cool. All right. No, we're not gonna use that one. We're gonna use this one. All right. Well, what is this one? No, we're not gonna use that one. Although I did pull a key on this one. Could you believe that? I pulled that key. Maybe we'll try that one afterwards. See if I can still do it. All right. So, I'm gonna drag this down to this guy. Create a new composition. And um, gonna go into here. We want to go effects, keying, key light. Key light, you wanna, um, actually, no, I'm gonna show you a super advanced technique. You wanna see a super advanced technique, you wanna see a noob technique. Yeah! Super advanced! All right, this is pretty cool. This is a trick I learned from Aaron Rabinowitz. All right, so, keying, we're gonna go to color key. We're just gonna choose this. That's not the color I chose at all, okay. Uh, and then we're just gonna copy and paste that one. Choose more, change the tolerance. Looking pretty good, right? Looks like a great key, right? It's not the point. It's not the point, okay? You're missing the point. 